Dawson. Now, in other news here in Nigeria, moved by the need to stem the tide of an impending flood crisis across the country, President Bola Tinubu has directed an immediate plan of action to mitigate the impact of any disaster. To this effect, he has appointed Kogi State mm -hmm. Governor Yahaya Bello as chairman of the committee to produce a roadmap by harmonizing the recent National Economic Council report on flood, the 2022 National Flood Emergency Preparedness and Response Plan, as well as all other national reports on flood. The Deputy Governor of Akwaibom State, Senator Akon Eyakengi, will serve as Vice Chairman of the committee, which is expected to submit its recommendations in seven days. At an emergency meeting presided over by Vice President Kashim Shetima at the behest of the President on Tuesday, President Tinubu gave marching orders to the committee for an action plan on all the reports, saying it was best to be proactive than to be reactive. Well, Arise analyst Dayo Shobowale joins us now to discuss uh, President Tinubu's action plan to tackle flooding with the setting up of a committee headed by Kogi State Governor Yahaya Bello and what more the government needs to do to curb the incidents. Good afternoon and welcome to Newsday, Mr. Shovalwala. It's great it's to have you. It's a pleasure to be here. Right. Now, before we get into flooding issues, I'd just love to get your insight and your, your, your initial takeaways uh, from Peter Obi's press conference and uh, the comments he has shared, uh, that we, the story that we took bef before the flooding. And um, Peter Obi is following the mood of inquiry on the authenticity of uh, the president's certificate. But the university has said that he went to the school and they gave him the certificate, but that there are some modalities on presentation of certificates in the US that are different from what we have in Nigeria. Um, BBC Verify, you know there is a BBC program, BBC Verify. That's a program that said that there is no evidence that the certificate is supported is fake. You know, BBC has gone out of its way to create a special podcast to verify fake news. And they broadcast it, I mean, they show it on a regular basis. This is one of them. This will give light to all the frenzy about the quality of his certificate. And that, that to me, that should, you know, let people put their mind at rest and not heat up the polity unnecessarily over a matter that is before the court. It is, it is, it is mischievous. It is mischievous. And if people are interested in fact, they should listen to that BBC Verify issue. Because it was set up to verify fake news. And they have a way of putting it out. And that statement says it all. I don't want to comment further on that. All right, so let, let's go straight to the uh, issue of uh, flooding and, of course, our President uh, Tinubu's uh, uh, plan of action here. So the Lagdo Dam in Cameroon, um, I think, is about opening or thereabout. So this is not the first time uh, we've Lagdo. seen... Yeah, that's, uh, so it's been, it's been an annual or biannual uh, occurrence over time. But uh, has Nigeria prepared enough for flooding issues? Over time, we've seen plan of actions but then again, when it comes to implementation, there seems to be a, a little bit of question mark. And uh, do you, what are your expectations on this latest uh, yeah, I'm happy committee? You, uh, you mentioned this Lagdo issue. Yes. Because the last time the flooding happened, the director general of the, our hydrographic agency mm -hmm. said he got information about the flooding seven days after the dam had overreached its <coughs> And they call it communication problem. Mm. And that communication problem can lead to loss of property, human lives, and so many things. But uh, you see, the approach of the vice uh, president, the National Economic Council, and the setting up of committees by governors, OK, that's political as far as I'm concerned. Mm. You see, to, you know the flooding thing is a seasonal issue. Yeah. Uh, it's based on experience. If I want to run fast now, I will see artificial intelligence will clear it. In meteorology, in the climatology, in, you know, hydrography, artificial intelligence is you know, uh, playing a great part. 
If I with Google, Google has the uh, uh, Google Deep Mind, that means which they use to forecast weathers, and storms, tornadoes, and all that. What we need, let the committee go on. Let it submit its report in seven days. But it cannot have a report without the Department of Meteorology, mm -hmm. without the Hydrography Agency, without the Human Affairs and Disaster uh, Body. And so many institutions set in place to monitor these things. You see, it's, it is a pity. These institutions give fear warnings, but governments don't act. Although governments do give warnings, like Lagos State, they mention areas where the flood will come on. All over the country, especially the river basins, the river basins authorities, the, 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 the coastal cities and the coastal states, they, they see because they are, the lives of their citizens depend on it. They have plants on the ground, to want, it's seasonal. Especially now, the, you know that this is September, October. The, the level of the rain will rise. And people have been told to clear away from some areas. But you know, some people are damned. Some people are suicidal, literally. And some people say they have nowhere to go, so whatever will happen will happen, that they will repair later. That is the human factor in it. But to me, what government needs to do is to move in the direction of technology, to move in the direction of technology, to predict and act, you get me? So that it is not reactive, so it is proactive. You need to equip all these agencies we used to monitor the weather and forecast and predict, give them the most up-to-date equipment. That is the thing, and ultimately, Ultimately, you no know, bank on artificial intelligence right. to mm -hmm. get the correct applications mm -hmm. and right. save our, our citizens' lives. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Dari Shabwale, thank you yeah. very much for that. Uh, so it's about technology and uh, hopefully not more, more committees. <laughs>